So apparently, Sony just got hacked again, and this is like an hour ago, so let's quickly check this shit out. It has happened again. Now, if you're a boomer like me, well, I'm not technically a boomer, but in internet terms, yes, I am a boomer. Uh, okay. You remember a little thing called the Lizard Squad. If you don't know about this, well, you should go back and look up your history. No idea. This little group of script kitties decided to go ahead and take down Sony's online network for quite some time, in fact. It was so bad that PlayStation oh, had to go out and apologize to actual customers live on stage and then turn around and hand out free games to everyone because this was so incredibly bad. Now you're asking yourself, Alex, why are you bringing this up wow. again? This is all old news. I, I never even knew that this was a thing that happened. What happened? Well, it turns out that Sony was hacked again. That's right, baby, we never learn from our mistakes and apparently things are always gonna go from bad to worse. But let's take a look at the article from VGC and see what actually happened. The ransomware group named Ransomed.VC claims to have successfully breached Sony Group and is threatening to sell a cache of stolen data from the Japanese company. While the claims of the group remain unverified, Cybersecurity Connect reports that the relative ransomware newcomer has racked up an impressive amount of victims since bursting onto the scene last month. We have successfully compromised all of Sony's systems, the group claimed, on both the clear and dark nets. We won't ransom them. We will sell the data due to Sony not wanting to pay. Data is for sale. Now Fuck. Dude, this is getting wild. Like, these guys are actually just running around like fucking terrorists. Now, just to make a couple of things clear, this is not just a PlayStation hack. This is all of Sony being hacked. That's an even bigger thing besides just your video games we're talking about actual products tvs movies music the whole shebang has been hacked and they have mountains of data apparently that they're willing to sell because they're not going to ransom it and it turns out sony is not willing to pay for the data back so it's up for sale like they said before they're really i guess the reason why sony wouldn't pay for the data back is once you have the data even if you handed it back you're not really handing it back because it's not like Sony lost the data. You just have the data. So uh, you, I'm paying you so that you don't release the data, but you still have the fucking data, right? So you can make a copy of that shit and then just keep ransoming it off. So I can understand why Sony is like, fuck that. We're not paying. The weird thing, though, is how come hackers never have like a good written statement. You can script yourself into a way of getting into servers, but you can't write a complete sentence or even use punctuation properly. That's that's always been weird to me, right? Doesn't that strike you kind of odd? According to Cybersecurity mm -hmm. Connect, the group has posted some proof of hacked data, although it is, although it's, according to Cybersecurity Connect, the group has posted some proof of the hacked data, although it says this is quote unquote, not particularly compelling information on the face of things. And really that's sort of like the big thing of what's going on with all of this. It could be in fact, anything that they've hacked. It could be simple emails or something really just insane that no one really knows about. So maybe backdoor dealings. We don't really know what's actually happening, but the fact that also this could in fact just be a massive, just waste of time and totally hot air. They could also just be lying as well, even though they've apparently hacked other companies and things along that nature. We don't really know what's actually happening. And I think the right move for Sony is in fact to not play ball and not give the ransomware because it could in fact just be a couple of What's interesting is that it's happened now, and I wonder if these guys weren't looking for the smoking gun. There's been a lot of stories around this FTC thing with Microsoft and Activision, and a lot of rumors floating around that it's actually Sony pulling the strings in the background with the whole Microsoft Activision thing. So it's sort of interesting that it happened now of all fucking times. Of really mundane office emails that really no one truly cares about instead of just something that could really have a bomb sh yeah so the whole microsoft deal with the ftc yeah grow file there's rumors that suggest that it's actually sony that has a fuck ton of lobbyists at the at the ftc and the reason the ftc is going after the microsoft deal so hard is because of sony because sony really doesn't want the microsoft activision deal to go through because sony stands to lose the biggest game on playstation which is call of duty should the deal go through? 
Uh, and that's sort of why this entire thing is happening the way that it is. So it's possible that these hackers thought that maybe they could find some kind of smoking gun. You know, some kind of evidence that it is actually Sony that sits behind the deal. The fact that Sony doesn't want to pay suggests that either the data that they had or that they found doesn't contain that data, or that data just doesn't exist, so Sony isn't behind the whole thing. That's just me fucking speculating tinfoil hat bullshit, really. Chill in the industry, whether or not it's the tech firm side, the movie or music side, or even the gaming side. Now, the hacked data that Ransom.vc showed says it includes what appears to be screenshots of an internal login page, an internal PowerPoint presentation, several Java files, and a file tree of the leak, which seemingly includes fewer than 6,000 files. So yeah, we're already seeing some sort of cracks in this entire, like, we've got your data, give us your money kind of a thing. A God login door, page, that could also pretty be much it. anybody yeah, can that's get a good, to that. That's a good point. Um, we're talking about, like, internal files, like Java files. That could be literally anything, really. And then a PowerPoint presentation, that could truly be anything from any major mergers or buyouts to, hey, here's what we're going to have in the cafeteria for next week for your employee lunch. PowerPoint of your penis. i do that. That it could literally just be the CEO who made a PowerPoint of his penis. Valid. I mean, this this really could be a whole bucket of nothing, but, you know, you never want to take any threat unseriously, especially with the way things are today. But you see, things may in fact take a crazier turn. <laughs> Uncle because true. the hack group actually said this. The okay. group listed a post date of September 28th, after which if no one purchases the data, it is presumed when ransomware.vc will publish the data wholesale. Ransom.vc is said to be both a ransomware operator and a ransomware as a service organization. So yeah, already the way this is sounding, this doesn't seem like they just walked in and said, hack the planet, and they just started hacking all their servers and had EDM playing in the background and just slamming away on their keyboards while some guy is smoking a cigarette in the background saying, transfer the billions of dollars to my offshore uh, Ecuadorian account, please. Like, I, I don't think it's anything like that. I think what mm -hmm. really happened was that Jim in public relations got an email and he didn't get enough sleep last night and he clicked the email that was actually a ransomware typed his password in because they made a fake login page and then they got access to whatever jim was working on in terms of a powerpoint for his presentation next week to his boss about you know what color the tile should be in the new building i i, I don't know it's probably just something stupid like that but really like, this doesn't seem like anything that is going to be just out of control where they're going to be taking tons of data. Who knows? I could be wrong about this. That could be crazy if that is the case. But this sounds to me like it is just a bunch of nothing. <laughs> if they're only working on, like, ransomware and things like that. This kind of reminds me I mean, of the whole... I don't know if I would draw the same conclusion. Ransomware is fucking rough. It's not common. But, I mean, there are ransomware guys that can bring entire companies to a fucking standstill. Right? Because they can literally just take control of the whole fucking system and basically, if you don't pay the ransom, you don't do business. So I wouldn't say just based on the fact that they do ransomware, that, that, that somehow points or somehow means that it's not that big of a deal. I'm not saying that it is a big deal, but I'm not in agreement with that point. This is why password managers are important until they get hacked at least. True. Like toolbar thing back in the old days where you would have all these toolbars on your browser because you accidentally clicked yes on the EULA and then you had to call them and they wanted you to give them money to have that actually removed where you can just go ahead and just uninstall that ransomware. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. But anyways, let's keep going. Wait, no. Ransomware isn't quite like that though. Isn't... Like, ransomware is that shit where they... It was like a few years ago where ransomware became a huge thing because you would literally have people locked out of their PCs. Like, physically fucking locked out. You can't do shit. You can't get in. It's completely locked. And then you would have to pay in order for them to actually unlock it. And you had all of these fucking antivirus companies running rampant trying to figure out if there was a way to stop the ransomware uh, or to even remove it. And in some cases, there's ransomware out there that is just, they can't remove it. Once it's in there, unless you pay, they can't get rid of it. 
I'm pretty sure it's much larger than just the toolbars that keep opening up. Because I remember that shit. That was like fucking years ago, right when dial-up internet was still the thing. It claims to be a secure solution for addressing data security vulnerabilities within companies and also to be operating in strict compliance with GDPR and data privacy laws. In cases where payment is not received, we are obligated to report a data privacy law violation to the GDPR agency, the group says. Now look, if we're already talking about like they're operating out of ransomware and talking about reporting things to the GDPR, look, you're not a white hat buddy. Don't try to be a nice guy about these whole things. Let's be real. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm just going to report your unable ability to protecting your servers to the GDPR. Yeah, okay. R relax. Relax, chief. All right. You're not, you're not special. Okay. But then also operating out of Ukraine and Russia really just goes to show that this could in fact just be a couple of script kitties trying to make a quick buck. Really not there knowing. There we go. Uh, Kalkator has this. Uh... <laughs> Operating out of Ukraine and Russia, there you go. At least the Russians and the Ukrainians have found one way of working together. Who they're messing with, in all honesty. I mean, Lizard Squad got a couple of months in jail for taking down the actual PSN network for that long, but who knows what'll happen to these guys. And honestly, I think what'll happen, in my opinion, is the actual leak will then get pushed out. We'll realize it's just a couple of emails about Jill and Jane and the water cooler, and then you'll see some nothing out of the PowerPoint. Or life could throw a curveball at us and there could be a lot of sensitive information that happens because of this hack. So with all that being said, I really feel like the most important message in this video yeah, is not going to be about Sony getting hacked, but how you can actually protect yourself and make sure that your accounts are protected. Even though companies try to do their best to have security connections and actually try to secure their service as best as they can, there's always going to be that human element of people screwing up or something happening or data being breached. The best thing that you can absolutely do is try to protect yourself by one, not having all your passwords to every login that you have be there. thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The exact same. I would highly avoid doing that because trying to change every password on every account that you don't even know exists really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially when one password has access to everything that you possibly log into, even personal banking information. So please don't do that. That's rule number one. Another thing I would highly suggest is to create a Word document of all the actual logins that you try to have, whether it is something like the web page, the username login, and then a password. So you can quickly use control F to find what that password is and then paste it into the actual website you're trying to log into. And then do not save your password in the web browser because that is how a cookie is saved and how people lose their YouTube accounts to Ethereum hacking things. You, you've seen that. Everybody's had that every once in a while. Wait, what? I'm, I'm begging people to not use a Word document to save all of your passwords for the love of fuck. Word is not Fort Knox. Like, <laughs> if someone can get access to your PC, they'll have that Word document in no fucking time. Like, there are actual programs out there that you can download that will manage your passwords for you. You can use some of the online ones if you really want. They're not as secure, but uh, they're more secure than most. Most of it is encrypted, so even if the guys manage to get access to it, uh, they're they're getting a bunch of encrypted shit, right? So it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but then there's like proper ones. There's actually one that I'm actually in the process of switching to, which it's completely offline. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Oh, fuck. Oh, what's it called? Is it Keep It? Um, I'll have to check. It's, it's a fuck ton of work because you have to... It could be Key Pass, actually. Maybe it is Key Pass. It's something that effect. I'm busy working on it, but I don't have the thumb drive with me now, so I can't check. Um, Because I've already downloaded it onto a thumb drive. And you have to physically, one by one, uh, you have to move every single one of your passwords and login details to that thing. But then what's nice is you can actually build multiple thumb drives and have those be master logins as well as, uh, you, you know, your um, two-factor authentication. You can actually build a thumb drive with KeyPass that, that allows that becomes your two-factor authentication. So, uh, but that is like proper secure. If you like really want something that's gonna keep your shit safe, 
It was something like keep us. In a while, don't click the links. Don't save the password. Just don't. And finally take that Word document and place it on something like a USB drive. So that way you can just keep around and then just plug into your PC whenever it's necessary and then disconnect it because it doesn't need to be on there all the time. And you don't want to have anything locally stored on your PC that has sensitive data information because that will also possibly get hacked if you don't follow those steps. Those are just some basic rule of thumbs that Alex likes to operate with. But either way, I find this hack somewhat amusing, not only because we can probably tell that it's actually just a couple of script kitties doing things in Russia and they're the Ukraine, but more than likely it's going to be a bunch of data that really doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, even though this is Sony's corporation as a whole. Now, what I really hope that happens is that these people are caught, then the data is not released so that way if there's any sensitive information no one is negatively impacted and then we can go about our day because the one thing nobody ever really wants is to have their personal data stolen and then just dumped on the internet because a couple of dudes thought they could make a quick buck by trying to get a login page and a powerpoint it just seems so silly honestly but anyways y'all let me know what you guys think about this in the comments section down below do you think that this is a massive hack do you think sony has more data to be released or do you think this is all just a bunch of hot air being blasted around by a company and some little dudes that just really are trying to get their five minutes of fame now if you want to see more of this kind of content subscribe to the channel we are getting close to 54,000 subs so i do appreciate it very much we're also doing more pc port reviews gaming news steam deck videos as I'll well give as it a like it's a decent and also streams on Saturday every 8.45 p.m. Eastern, so come on down and enjoy that. If you want to join the community, just go ahead and become a YouTube member. It's as low as a dollar. If you don't want to do that, that's perfectly cool. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, Sony would have freaked out a lot more if actual things of value was taken. I don't think that's what happened here. Still interesting to know. Uh, and just further proof that most of these companies that are constantly collecting all of our fucking data is literally causing the issues that we deal with. Because if these companies would just stop collecting every ounce of fucking data they can get their hands on, we wouldn't be in this mess, right? It wouldn't, there wouldn't be anything that you can really steal from these companies because they don't collect your data and they don't keep your data. But no, these guys absolutely have to do this because at the end of the day, they sell it themselves. So maybe that's why Sony isn't doing anything. These guys are going, well, we'll absolutely sell your data. And Sony's going, we've already sold it to fucking everyone, bro. No one's going to buy it. You're going to go to all of your customers and be like, hey, we've got Sony's data. And the customer's going, like, yeah, we too. Already bought it. <laughs> we already know everything that Sony users are doing. So, you know, you never know. But yeah, anyways. Omar X, how you doing, brother?